That was me having a beautiful, relaxed look over Sheffield. My name's Chris Downham. I'm on the other side of this camera. Turn around and say hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. <laughs> and we are twins. Uh, and we're from Grow Your Health. We're trying to encourage and inspire people to grow vegetables to improve their health and eat them. Obviously, the growing bit is, uh, well, that's a good start, but eating is even better. And we are at Crooks Community Farm, or soon to be named Crooks Community Farm, in the Crooks Bowl Hill area of Sheffield. And very soon we'll be looking for uh, volunteers to help us run this as a fabulous community supported agriculture pro process um, farm. And this is our polytunnel, the large polytunnel. Quite a lot of triumphs, quite a lot of failures, quite a lot of bickering, as we tend to do because we are twins. Um, I just want to show you a few bits. We're actually about to get to a funny stage and we're sort of thinking whether we should do it or not. We're going to do it. We're, gonna, we're, gonna do it. we're about to hoist a very large polythene. I would say this is probably a galleon sized uh, sail or polythene sail over the polytunnel and it's quite blustery. So this could be an error. We'll uh, feed back and let you know how that goes. A couple of things that we think have gone quite well, these centre poles. So, uh, well, I'll take actually to the start. Th this site was all a hill. So we got a digger in, cost about 300 pounds, um, probably saved us about four months of work and leveled this or very nearly leveled. There's about a two foot gradient, which would have been better if it wasn't there. And uh, so there's about a two foot gradient from that being the lower, that being slightly higher, which has caused us a few issues. We've used the technique of scaffold poles. So these are just standard scaffold poles, about six foot long. And if it hadn't been so rocky, we would have just banged these in with a, a fence banger. Although word of warning, if you smash the top of a scaffold pole with a fence banger, you will eventually break off the top of the fence banger. So we did that twice and ruined two of those. Uh, so in the end, we had to use a hole digger. Uh, we had tried using one of the uh, petrol powered hole boring ones but it was too many stones, it just kept kicking us around. So in the end, we just handballed it and uh, then filled this with cement post or post cement, about a third of a bag for each one. Got these nearly level. We always try to get things level, but then Pretty close. somehow things go a little bit unlevel. And then we put some WD-40 on and slid down these uh, 62 millimeter water piping. To give you an idea of costs, about 150 pounds for 32 of the um, scaffold poles, so a few pounds each. And it was about 550, something like that, for 100 meters of, or did we have more than 100 meters? That was 100 meters, wasn't it? 100 meters of um, uh, drainage pipe. And this stuff, it will um, stand the test of time. And also you can screw straight into it as well. So that, that was a, um, really good. That took us about a day to get these banged in. Uh, it took us about another day to get things uh, leveled up. It's not perfect by, by any means, but it is good enough. Uh, so then what we wanted to do is support the middle. That was the next thing that we did. Got them all fairly level. We're not perfectionists, so we uh, didn't beat ourselves up about a couple of inches here or there. And then this was just off cuts of, of wood, um, which go across the top. And then these were, we had some little scaffold poles left over because we've got 50 of these. So we just banged these scaffold poles in, didn't use um, post cement this time, which was easier. And then this is security fencing. It's, there's some over there. These are knackered old ones. Uh, we just cut them up with a hacksaw, pop them inside, put a piece of wood against, and literally you could, as you can see, we can still take some slack out of this. And then we've just drilled in through here, which will hold this tight. So. What that gives us is nice open space within the um, polytunnel. So we're pretty chuffed with that and we hadn't actually seen that done on YouTube before. Uh, then we decided that unlike our other polytunnel up there, which gets too humid, uh, we wanted to have, and because of the size of this, we wanted to have some um, better flow of air. So this, we use this, which is cargo netting. Um, I think it was about 35 pounds, something like that, for loads and loads of it. We're going to use it all over our brassica beds next year. Cut which we, which yeah, cut this into three. So it was uh, um, well, three of these, which went along with scissors. That was laborious. We did it as a race. I won. Um, and at the moment, we've just secured this at the top. We've secured it with. Uh, if you want to go round, Bob, and have a, a quick look from round there. 
Get you under this rope. Yep. Rob will be on film as well. Hopefully you're gonna do a lot of sort of showing our successes as well as our many failures and learning. So we've just used um, uh, duct tape, which was four pounds a roll from Amazon, 25 meter roll and a um, staple gun. And I've attached that in. There is gonna be another piece of wood over this. And hopefully this is going up tomorrow when we get some more supporters. And you can see, if you look along here, it looks a bit this like- better side though. Yeah, this is the better side. We'll take you to the other side at the moment. Um, in hindsight, we probably should have been a bit more accurate with these. It would have made it, well, we've oh, made it pretty much impossible bye. for ourselves to do a big roller system on here. So we're not quite sure what that's gonna be yet, but we'll, we will find a solution. Um, so what we're gonna do is the polythene's gonna go over the top down to here uh, and then this it's actually a bit too tight at this side at the moment but this oh, it won't pull up because we've got these wooden batons in we've not fixed these in at the moment but if i show you over here here's one we've been working on earlier we've taken out the wooden batons so these wooden batons these are going to get jammed back in here but in reality what we're going to be able to do is put the polythene under this and then push it tight on both sides to get hopefully i keep using probably overusing the word ping tight um, but I like it. Yes, ping. So we'll do that test at the end uh, and probably realise it's not ping tight. Um, point to note, we've been using Ryobi tools for pretty much everything we do. We find them really, really good, mainly because we could charge the batteries on our solar rig, which I will go into at some point um, in a different video when I've improved it. Um, but it just means we've got great power. We've got six batteries, just keep rotating them around the um, tools. If you want to know what to get either of us for Christmas, something for Ryobi. I think we're collecting all of them slowly. Um, then we've put down weed suppressant. So we had, this is the cardboard tube from the weed suppressant. So 450 meters squared of weed suppressant and we've got three massive rolls of it. I mean, this is just a, probably a, what, a 20th of our, what will be our community farm. Um, but this weed suppressant, we then connected that using, again, the duct tape. So that was really, really useful. And we put, if you look down at this pole, but base of this pole here, Bob, we duct taped round the poles. So um, this is our first year of doing anything agricultural and we underestimated the power of slugs and caterpillars. Um, so we are going to war next year. We're gonna make this, <laughs> anybody knows anything about, when I'm about to say we're gonna make this caterpillar and slug proof, I don't, there probably isn't such a thing. Um, Anything else that you think we should mention about what we've... Now we've got the ropes in to be able to hoist it up. And okay, that's probably worth, worth doing. So what we've done is, um, <laughs> this might or might not work, we've put, found the sides, just literally screwed two pieces of scrap wood together, put some rope past. We've got six of these points, um, only two of us, so we could do with six. Windy. It windy. is a bit windy. Um, so that, yeah, we this... Dropped, I think we need to... Yeah. We, we should probably play. crack on this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to pull it over and then we'll um, show some footage at the end. Uh, and then we've got a bigger squad of people coming tomorrow. So that is our thoughts on the um, polyton. I think Bob's going to give a little rendition of maybe we are sailing, which is what could happen when we start to hoist the mags. Uh, whoa, whoa, here we are. No, oh, we're doing it from the start. And this could be a shout out to an unknown hero of this particular project, John Dunn, or Sea Dog as he's known. He's now back at sea again. And we've been wondering about what sort of people you need to help out on a community farm. You want fishermen. They're bloody strong and they've got a great work ethic. So, a quick thank you to Arnold Laver as well. Oh yeah, yeah. This is gonna be known as the Arnold Laver Polytunnel because Arnold Laver, um, we asked and they said, yeah, we will donate you the wood. So massive thank you to the marketing department at Arnold Labour. We will mention you again. And the wood that we've been using is pre-treated, 10 centimetres thick, two centimetres, or 10 centimetres wide, two centimetres thick, 4.5 metres long coming out of my car. So when we went to go and pick up 50 of these in the, with my car, the lads were laughing at us, but we managed right, let's it. Let's haul sales, Chris. Let's haul sales. Thank you very much.